Uh, my name is Sasha Dawes with Solowinds. Uh, I'm going to talk about visual root cause analysis. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. I actually looked up the, uh, you know, where did that come from? And apparently it was uh, some English saying a while back. Uh, but I thought it was an old Chinese proverb, but clearly wrong. Um, key thing, you know, just going to go through a, a kind of a few areas. Just talk about the, uh, you know, kind of where data has been, how it applies into IT and uh, cover a little bit about how we at Solomons are kind of using that data to create those visualizations to help with um, IT insights <laughs> and data management. So not too long ago, I remember when I was looking after a firewall on a web server, this was the way that I looked through data to try and understand what was going on. It was a table, and typically it was, took a very long time to refresh. <laughs> I think I was using a, a checkpoint firewall, again, this is probably 10 or 15 years ago, and it was only showing about 10 lines at a time running on a Spark. But ultimately, you know, the, the key challenge out of something like this is where is the problem? In fact, is there indeed a problem here or do you have to go to another set of data to really find what's going on? And that's the premise of the conversation today. It's all about how visualization is being used today to improve insights and decision making. You know, everyone wants a good, sexy dashboard. You know, no one wants just a, a set of data up on the thing. They want to see the colors. They want to see, understand what's going on visually. And this is just one example of uh, you know, a dashboard you may see. Uh, other things, you know, it can provide context. And again, it's all about getting to really understand what's going on without having to go through those reams and reams of data. <coughs> so they insist they, well, that, that is me. Um, before, I think some of the gray came in. But uh, you know, basically, I've been uh, at Sonowin since 2018, uh, currently in product marketing. But I've had a, uh, a fun career in engineering, in product management, and so on and so forth. That's about all we need to worry about. I live in Austin, Texas, whoop. whereas, yep, whoop, <laughs> hook them. Um, sorry, I had to do that in case, in, ca in case the wife is watching. Um, but uh, effect effectively, I'm from the UK. I've just lived in the United States a very long time, so no one really knows when they hear my accent where I'm from, but from the UK. Just a little bit about SolarWinds at a glance. This is like our scorecard. We've been around since 1999, so happy birthday to Tech Field Day, and it's also our 20th birthday, so uh, we're very happy about that. We've got about 2,500 employees globally. Uh, we, we have a number of specialties. Uh, you know, we're very well known in the network management space. Not so well known, but in, increasingly known in areas like systems management, uh, IT management. We had a conversation about IT operations management. Um, we also have a, a whole suite of tools and capabilities around DevOps and modern application monitoring as well. Uh, Stephen talked about our SWAT community, very vibrant. We have, as it says, over 150,000 and growing users every day. And uh, you know, we have a very broad set of customers across the world uh, to the point that uh, you know, we've, we've got about 499 of the Fortune 500. We nearly had the 500s, but then Fortune, 5, Fortune decided to, to change their characteristics. Where have we come from? So no surprise, we're known as network monitoring because that's where we started. So, as I said, we, we originated in 1999. We originally came out with a whole set of tools, started network management, then moving out into 2015, where we introduced some systems management capabilities, database, security, and so on and so forth, all the way to pretty much where we are today. So we have three core businesses, tools for MSPs, tools for cloud, um, very much modern apps and modern app monitoring, and then our traditional core IT. And so I'll cover some of the scenarios today about how we use visualization. And of course, you know, the, the concepts that we use can be used by anyone out there, but it's, it's all about, again, how do we get to that picture of information as quickly as possible? One thing I'll be touching on, and I'll be getting to a demo just to go through all these scenarios as quickly as possible, is our Orion platform. And that's probably one of the most established product platforms that we have today. It has about 15 product modules that sit on top of there that do that network monitoring, that do that systems monitoring, application monitoring. So if you think about it, we do application and infrastructure management and monitoring. And again, I'll show some of those scenarios, but not only on premises, but out into public cloud and, and other cloud environments as well. So that's really one of our focuses is to enable you know, folks to really be able to monitor the applications and infrastructure wherever that resides. I'm just going to cover a little bit about how we've gone into that journey with into data visualization with SolarWinds to actually you know, make that happen to, to help provide that view. Now, interestingly, um, a gentleman called uh, Edward Tuft, 
He's actually a professor, and I forget the exact university, but he had, he's written a number of books about data visualization. He's one of the uh, kind of folks that's really seen as the pinnacle of uh, his, his craft in the space. And he came up with these kind of key things to say, you know, graphical displays should all be about revealing data. And these are kind of principles to, to follow and that we try to follow in order to be able to show that information successfully. And just to pick out a couple, you know, present many numbers in a small space. Clearly, you know, you don't want to see the, the, the huge amounts of data. It's just too challenging to, uh, to go through. Um, make large data sets coherent. I mean, in the world today where we have, you know, gigabytes of data being produced at sometimes every hour, if not every day, by even smaller organizations, up to the largest organizations, big data is a big challenge for IT operations, and obviously for visualization. And ultimately, yeah, you want to encourage the eye to compare different pieces of data to reveal the data at the level that you need to be able to get that information on. So whether you need to drill down or, or get that overarching holistic picture, this is a great set of principles. Just interestingly, this is probably more for the next time you're doing the, uh, uh, the quiz at the pub. <laughs> Where did visualizations really originate? And surprisingly, it, I mean, I guess it was just over 200 years ago, but it's not that long in terms of history. You may have think, okay, maybe it was the Greeks or the Romans. No. There's actually uh, an English gentleman in 16, 1765 called Joseph Priestley, and he came up with the, the first timeline chart. So uh, um, he was uh, you know, just trying to show information in a different way. Soon thereafter, uh, a Scot, actually just one other piece of information, Joseph Priestley kind of uh, discovered oxygen. He was the first one to actually identify and, and pull it out in its own unique state. Anyway, again, not relevant to the topic today. That's for your next trivia quiz. William Playfair, he was the first person to invent the bar chart. In fact, not just the bar chart, but the line chart, the area, and the pie chart. The common things that we're all used to today, but this is where effectively it came from. Now, where did we start in visualization? Yeah, for sure, when we first came out with our tools, there was a lot of data. Um, network performance monitor, pretty much around you know, version 11. That's when we released a product called Network Atlas, and a lot of our customers use that today. And in fact, it can create some really nice pictures. It has some challenges on the way, but uh, you know, we had information like you know, we could you know, poll SNMP, we can get information about IP addresses, MAC addresses, and so on and so forth, and relationships, and start to pull that information up. But even in tabular format, you don't want to necessarily be looking for that red dot. So we worked to come up with Network Atlas and start to create some charts, you know, graphical backgrounds, and so on and so forth. And that's where we've been for a while. One of the things we've uh, more recently come out with, and I'll cover that today, is something called Orion Maps where <clears throat> the challenge with Network Atlas, it's not very scalable. And once you create a, a graphic or a chart, it's very difficult to go back. Or it's not difficult, but you have to keep maintaining it. And everyone knows environments, they, they change. They need to be dynamic. Yeah. Some of our customers have created 500 beautiful visualizations. But again, they're not dynamic. Imagine the amount of time and effort to keep that up to date. Got paid a lot of money to do charts in SolarWinds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, loads. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I managed to fill in days and days and days just idling around, looking busy. It was great. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know, yeah. value right there. That's right. Delivery yeah. value, you know, executives well, loved it. Well, and if you think about where a lot of companies were before yeah. charts and, and just some of the technologies to create those charts came in, they would spend thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, with consultants to really get a better understanding of what applications were talking to what application to start to build those network maps. I mean, Visio became very popular just for yeah. that same reason. It used to drive the engineers wild because they'd be off doing real work, like, you know, reloading oh, yeah. operating systems and changing things, and I'd be drawing charts, and then the manager would say, what did you do? I said, I did this chart, and he's going, very well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People like pretty charts. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 No, because again, it, it's the visual to see, hey, what is, what is all the stuff that's going on? And yeah, sometimes, as you said, it can take time to create a, a nice looking graphic. Okay, and this is where the, the super fast build comes in, or relatively fast. But you know, we've made a number of enhancements over time, and I'll take you through some of those visualizations through the demo in just a moment. But we've come out with some technology called AppStack, which is really to show relationships at the application tier and understand what's going on there across the IT stack. And I'll show you that in just a few moments. NetPath, I call it trace route on steroids. 
because it's really, really understanding the path to get from point A to point B, especially valuable with a lot of SaaS services or the, the, the greater amount of SaaS services that are really starting to pop up today. PerfStack is kind of uh, you know, looking at uh, metrics across a time continuum. Again, I'll show you that in a moment. And where our core investment right now is Orion Maps, which is kind of <coughs> taking what we did with Network Atlas, but redesigning it, making it a lot more flexible, uh, making it a lot more dynamic. Um, and we continue to make investments there to try and work to get to parity in some of the capabilities, but we've already surpassed in other areas on Orion Maps. But again, the, the whole point of this is to show the principles behind that we've started to adopt in order to uh, you know, ideally make lives a lot easier. <coughs> 